What's going on, everyone? I go by the name of KB DeMarc, co-host of the DMB podcast. And for today, I'm riding solo. Got a couple of news articles I just wanted to go ahead and touch base for. So this is your Friday afternoon news for July 23rd, 2021. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It'll really help the channel grow. Let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Thunder Rosa signs with AEW. This is being reported by WrestlingNews.co. AEW announced on Thursday that they have officially signed Thunder Rosa to a full-time contract. She was with NWA while she was uh, working in AEW, being booked over there while the COVID was going on with NWA. They had stopped uh, filming for a little while. It is said that AEW President Tony Khan was very careful not uh he was very careful about contact tampering or contract tampering and wanted to play about the books on the situation tony khan and the owner of nwa billy corgan had worked out a deal for rosa to work for aew when nwa stopped holding shows due to the covid 19 pandemic dave Meltzer is reporting that on the latest edition of wrestling observer newsletter that both aew and nwa worked for rosa to be released on july 1st she signed with aew afterwards but aew decided to wait and uh, wait before officially announcing it so this this is a fantastic signing by aew they they've been on a roll as of late when it comes to the signings that they've been bringing in um you know a chavo a a brian danielson a cm punk now a thunder rosa these signings are fantastic and with the doctor and with the doctor Britt baker the aew women's world champion the doctor Britt baker D L D being the AEW Women's Champion at this time, it only makes sense that the next AEW Women's Champion will be Thunder Rosa. Maybe we will give the doctor maybe four or five different uh, storyline rivalries. And then when we get back to Thunder Rosa, this is where she drops the title. So maybe, Maybe a next year's revolution is when the doctor can drop that belt to Thunder Rosa. Belser added that Rosa got a great offer from AEW and AEW is now likely to push her uh, stronger. So that just goes back to what I was saying with her being the, uh, with her being next in line to be the AEW Women's World Champion. And then we saw Thunder Rosa just almost a week ago, last Sunday or Saturday, last Saturday, in a fantastic knockouts championship match with the virtuoso Diana Peraza. And I thought that was one, I thought that, that to me, that was one of my, I will say top five Thunder Rosa matches. I mean, it, it doesn't matter where you put Thunder Rosa on the card. She is a draw and you know you're gonna get a great match out of her. You can put her in the terms of dynamite, you can put her on the top of the hour, or you can give her the first 15 minutes commercial free. And in Impact's case, she was, I believe, she was at the tail end. I don't wanna say, she might've been right before the main event, but either way, it doesn't matter where you put Thunder Rosa, she's always going to be a, magnificent uh, attraction to the card and to me I don't believe she can have a bad match for anybody I'm very happy by this signing from, uh, from AEW Tony Khan knows exactly 
uh, what they're doing. Number two, the next article we have, Fighter Fest Night 2 viewership. This is being reported by WrestlingInc.com. Wednesdays, live Fighter Fest Night 2 edition of AEW Dynamite reportedly drew 1.148 million viewers on TNT. This is according to Brand, Brandon Thruston of WrestleNomics. This is up 12% from last week's Fighter Fest Night 1 edition, which drew 1.025. Dynamite drew a 0.44 in the 18 to 49 demographic this week. This is up 10% from last week's 0.40. The 0.44 key demographic rating represents about around 575,000 viewers who watched the show. From that 18 to 49 demo, this is up 11% from last week's 518,000 18 to 49 viewers that the 0.40 key demo rating represented. The Fighter Fest Night 2 drew the third most viewers in AEW history and the second most of the year of this year. It was tied with the April 14th show for the best key demo rating of this year. The Fighter Fest Night 2 viewership was up 12% from last week, while the 18 to 49 key demo rating was up 10% from last week. Last night's Dynamite viewership was up 36% from the same week in 2020. The key demo was up 37.5% from the same week last year, which went head to head against WWE NXT in the Wednesday night time slot. I like what I'm I like what I'm seeing from all uh, elite wrestling from AEW. I feel like Tony Khan he's starting to catch his groove. And it's crazy to say that because there have been times where they were consistently winning the Wednesday night wars against NXT. But I feel like with Tony Khan having close to two years under his belt, he's ready to take that next leap. And the signings of who we have mentioned already, the Daniels, the Danielsons, the Punks, and now Thunder Rosa, uh, Chavo Guerrero, who's gonna really help bring in that Latino fan base. With signings like those, me and Salamander were just doing some random topics yesterday, and I told him that with those signings, 1.125 to me might be the minimum that they, that might be the bare minimum that's going to start watching, that will consistently watch. It's only up from here. And with WWE Monday Night Raw, with John Cena, a Money in the Bank cash-in, a shocking re-debut of Keith Lee, and also the shocking burial of Karrion Cross, they only went up 300000 With Dang, with Brian Danielson and CM Punk, 1.125 is the minimum. And who knows? AEW might start getting 2 million. And if you keep booking the show, if Tony Khan keeps booking the show the way that it is and he keeps jam packing these shows, I, I don't know what Monday Night Raw is going to do. Because you can only rely on a Goldberg for so long. You can only rely on a John Cena. You can only rely on a Dwayne The Rock Johnson for so long. While AEW is not only bringing in stars that WWE had, they're bringing in the misfits that Vince didn't believe or the Vince's team couldn't write for. But then you have their homegrown talent, and those are the ones who's really getting over. A CM Punk and a Brian Danielson, they're, they're Laps fans who said, I'm going to stop watching until they leave WWE or until CM Punk comes back. Now you're getting those fans' eyesight on your homegrown talent, like a Sammy Guevara, like a Darby Allen. 
you know, and like a jungle book, MJF. You're getting their fans to look at your homegrown product. And they might like what they see from a Darby Allen. They might like what they see from a Sammy Guevara, a MJF, a Jungle Boy. Now those fans are looking at your homegrown talent and they like what they see. Now we're looking at 2 million. 2.25, maybe two and a half million. AEW is making the right moves, and this, and with the viewership consistently going up, this is the second week they went over a million. And to me, this was with a very, it wasn't the card or the show of a night one uh, fighter fest. I mean, this had the, what well, some people would say sloppy. I thought it was brilliantly paced. The uh, Nyla Rose versus the Dr. Britt Baker. That match was kind of sloppy. There was a throwaway match with the uh, with Frankie Kazarian and Doc Gallows. You know, with two throwaway, or with a throwaway match and a match that didn't live up to the hype that they were putting behind it, the show still was over a million. So, I, I really like what I'm seeing from All Elite Wrestling. And these numbers only show that it's going to go, it's only going to go off from here. Next story, WWE interested in re-signing Braun Strowman. This, uh, this story is coming from eWrestlingNews.com. WWE reportedly have an interest in bringing back the recently released Braun Strowman. Strowman, who was a one-time Universal Champion, was released on June 2nd of this year. Reportedly, according to the latest edition of Wrestling Observer Newsletter, WWE's interest in bringing Strowman back has stemmed from AEW's recent signing spree, a spree that looks set to continue if recent reports are to be believed, according to Dave Meltzer. Here's my problem. And if you're Braun Strowman and you just so happen to come across this, listen to what I'm saying. They're not interested in you. They want to keep you from going to all elite wrestling. If I'm Braun Strowman, they released you after giving you north of a million dollars. So, so what that tells me is that they just don't want to pay you. They didn't want to pay you your work. They don't want to pay you your work. They want to have you on the roster so you don't go to the other company and bring the fans that you had to said other company. Braun Strowman, you, you deserve better than what Vince and WWE is going to give you. They're going to bring you in for probably half of what you were making, ask you to do the same shit, and never allow you to be who you want to be. They'll probably bring you back and have you lose first then become a winner. This, every time I read something about WWE, whether they're releasing a wrestler or whether they're re-signing wrestlers, it's always with an ulterior motive. They want Braun so he doesn't go back to, so he doesn't go to AEW. That's all it is. They want Braun so he doesn't go back to, so he doesn't go to AEW. I mean, and that's okay. But if I'm Braun Strowman, I got to know my work. You should want me for the talent and what I'm bringing to the company. Not because you're scared 
that All Elite Wrestling might make Braun Strowman an offer he can't refuse. And he says, yeah, Vince, it's been nice knowing you. I'm going to go over here where they're going to book me correctly and everything else. Braun Strowman is a WWE guy through and through. Am I saying I would like to see him in All Elite Wrestling? No, quite frankly, I wouldn't. But if Braun Strowman decides and if Tony Khan decides that Braun Strowman is a big guy that he needs on All Elite Wrestling, hey, go ahead. If Tony Khan thinks I can bring Braun Strowman in here and show WWE how we should have, uh, how they should have been booking him from the jump. By all means, bring him in. I'm not going to be the happiest, but hey, I'm still going to watch. I still watch. I still watch WWE amongst all the bullshit that they do. I'm still going to watch AEW if they decide to bring in Braun Strowman. But WWE. Wanting to bring back Braun Strowman just because of the shopping spree that Tony Khan's been on. That's a horrible reason to want somebody who at one time you put the Universal Championship on. The one time you had him and a kid beat the Raw Tag Team Champions. I believe it was Sheamus and Cesaro the Bar. It was Braun Strowman and Nicholas versus versus Sheamus and Cesaro the bar. You had Braun Strowman win the Raw Tag Team Championships with a kid at WrestleMania. This guy beat Goldberg and you only want to bring him back because you're scared he might sign with all elite wrestling. That's a horrible reason. Next story, The Rock returning to WWE soon. This story is coming from WrestlingInc.com. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is reportedly set to return at the Survivor Series pay-per-view. It is already noted that WWE has plans for The Rock and Roman Reigns to work a match at WrestleMania 38 in Dallas. The Rock will return within the next few months to begin the build to that match. It is stated that the Rock is expected to appear on both Raw and SmackDown while building to the match with Reigns. USA Network officials reportedly want The Rock to appear on the post-Survivor Series edition of Raw. They said they are still a couple of months away from November and plans can, can and often change, but this story on The Rock appearing at SummerSlam can be confirmed from multiple sources. Uh, it was also re uh, reported that the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos, will play a big part in The Rock's WrestleMania 38 storyline with Reigns. And, it, uh, and Roman Reigns is scheduled to defend the, uh, the Universal Championship against John Cena on August 21st. So... I... I asked Salamander this question while we were doing another podcast. And I asked you guys to let me know in the comments, what will WWE do when it can no longer rely on a Dwayne The Rock Johnson, on a John Cena, on a Goldberg, on a Brock Lesnar? What? will WWE do when it's forced to build new stars? Because from what I'm hearing, Vince doesn't want to build a new star in fear that they'll go Hollywood. Vince, I don't know what to tell you. If they got the face for Hollywood, and technically you got them acting out of drama, that's all professional wrestling is. It's just pretty much a bunch of, a bunch of grown men cosplaying doing actual dangerous moves and dangerous stunts that can put you in the hospital and possibly kill you. But they're acting out a fantasy. They're acting out your fantasy. And if they feel as though they can go out and make some money in Hollywood, and if they leave WWE, you have to be okay with that. 
that's the point of always having stars in the back waiting to go. And it's, it amazes me that he would rather rely on a gold bird who can't do a jackhammer and go 10 minutes. He can't even go five minutes. You would rather rely on a Dwayne The Rock Johnson who he's always a draw. But you could be building up Roman's next loss. You could be building up a star that when it's time and the WWE Universe get behind said star, you can confidently say you're going to beat Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. I don't know what WWE will do when they can no longer rely on a Brock, a Goldberg, a Dwayne, and a John Cena. You have to have stars in the background waiting to go. If they would have continued building up Cesaro and not and not immediately threw him to Roman Reigns, even though I am on the record of saying I wanted to see that match next because they had nowhere else to go. But if they would have continued to build up Cesaro, I would have loved for Roman Reigns' title run to end at this year's SummerSlam against Cesaro. But they immediately threw Cesaro to Roman and Cesaro has been nowhere to be found. Gotta have new stars doing it. And if we're being honest, and this is going to segue into our next story. If it were me, I would have had Karrion Cross be the guy to dethrone Roman Reigns. Big guy, when he has the complete package, looks like a killer, and he's got the beautiful blonde to go with it. Karrion Cross, to me, looked like the guy that if you built him up correctly, he could be the guy. Or my other choice, a, an Adam Cole. You bring up Adam Cole. Let's just say Adam Cole wins the Royal Rumble. He goes off to SmackDown to challenge the head of the table, the Tribal Chief. Well, you still need to be able to get to April. So we tell a four month or let's see, late January, February, March. So we tell a three month story where Adam Cole continuously catches the beat down from the bloodline. Then Adam Cole gets the last beat down and in an interview segment, you can have whatever, well, Kayla Braxton. It can only be Kayla. You have Kayla Braxton ask Adam Cole. It seems like the bloodline has consistently had the numbers game. What can you do to combat that? To, to somehow get the numbers game in your favor? And he says, I don't know. But I think I need to call up some guys. Some guys who I thought I would never have to call. Guys I've turned my back on. And Adam Cole is off TV. Let's just say we run that. He's off TV till about midway to March. 
which is the or the later part of March, which is that fast lane paper. Then Roman Reigns defends the belt against whoever he wants to defend it against. After Roman Reigns retains, you hear undisputed eras music hit. Dun, 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 dun. And the crowd is gonna go nuts because they haven't seen Adam Cole in about a month. And you bring out Adam Cole, but Adam Cole seems to be the only guy until Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, and Roderick Strong come. But see, I would have Kyle O'Reilly come out last. Because in the buildup, I would have Kyle O'Reilly decline the offer. So when Adam Cole walks out with Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish, and they think he's about to go out there and run at the bloodline, before he goes, Kyle O'Reilly puts his hand on his shoulder and he puts on the Undisputed Era patch and they do, they do the thing. Then they run down clean house and Roman Reigns gets that beat down. Now we've made Adam Cole baby into a star. Now he has the numbers advantage against the bloodline. That's what I would do. You have the guys on NXT who are capable of being stars. You just have to know how to book them. You have to book them correctly. You can't do what happened on Monday Night Raw. Segue into our next story. Possible reasoning for Karrion Cross booking. This is coming from WrestlingWorld.co. And it reads, this week's episode of Monday Night Raw was packed full of shocks and surprises, including the main event date, uh, main roster debut of Karrion Cross. The NXT Champions debut was announced ahead of time. He went one on one with Jeff Hardy. Cross was defeated when Hardy, as a babyface, used the ropes as leverage. Did not sit well with the WWE Universe. I, I almost turned the show off. This was Cross's first defeat in his WWE career after two years, but it appears there could be a reason for the upset. Matt Men's podcast, Adrian, I'm sorry. Matt Men's podcast, Andrew Zarian, recently spoke to a source within WWE who confirmed that this was part of a much bigger story for Cross on the main roster. He also noted that Jeff Hardy is a mega star in WWE, so this shouldn't actually be seen as an upset. The source said, you know what the justification is? He cheated. He cheated, so it's a cheap win, but he's a former world champion. So like, it's just, it just shows you the lack of consistency with their champions. Jeff Hardy is a mega, mega star. He changed the industry for smaller guys. He created a new time of wrestling. I asked about it and they said, I don't know why everyone is freaking out about this. It was just one step in the direction we have for Karrion Cross, and this is leading into something. I'll tell you why everyone is freaking out about this. Because not only did you have a baby face, uh, not only did you have a baby face win by nefarious means not because he just came back with his old theme song no more words this this guy 
that you had Jeff Hardy beat was the undefeated at the time NXT champion, Karrion Cross. You decided to sacrifice the winning streak of Cross to give it to a fucking jobber who hasn't been doing a damn thing but main eventing, main event, I'm sorry, but losing, jobbing on main event to Jinder Mahal and his boys. You stripped this man's entrance butt naked. You took away the smoke. You took away the mirrors. You took away the blonde. You took away his mystique. The Karrion Cross booking goes to show that they're being booked by an old man who doesn't believe in making new stars and wants to continuously do it the way that he thinks it needs to be done. It amazes me. Brody Lee, when he left WWE and came to All Elite Wrestling, Talk about old man. Uh, talk about Vince being an out of touch old man that didn't believe it. And when you see the booking of this, it's apparent he doesn't believe in making new stars. He not only buried the NXT champion, he buried the entire NXT division outside of the four horsewomen, Seth Roman. KO to an extent. Most of the NXT call-ups have been buried. We He decided to bring back a debuting Keith Lee in front of the hometown fans to get squashed by the almighty WWE champion Bobby Lashley. He's had Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley in the worst storyline of the year. Vince McMahon is proving to be an out of touch old man who cannot and will not make any new stars. And honestly, until said old man steps away and allows Hunter to do the booking, I don't believe it will get any better. People saying it's shocking. It's not shocking. It's it's a fucking fuck up. It's a fuck up. Nothing was shocking about it. It's a fuck up. You had the NXT champion, the undefeated Karrion Cross, lose to a jobber. It's a burial of an entire promotion. The people, the, the stars that NXT has put in front of Karrion Cross, he punched a hole through the Mount Rushmore of NXT. Gargano, Pete Dunne, Valor, Adam Cole. Oh, and Kyle O'Reilly was in that match too. You pretty much had Karrion Cross run through NXT's greatest to build up this mystique that this guy was on another level. You stripped him naked. Took away everything about him and expected the universe to care. Here's what I say about this. It's a fuck up. If you have brought the, all of the bells and whistles with Karrion Cross, 
and you get that reaction, then that's then that's fine. That's something that we need to talk about. But she stripped him naked, told him to go out there with the bare minimum. The fucking guy looked like a regular guy on the roster. This guy, before the bullshit booking of Vince McMahon, this guy just choked out the returning Samoa Joe to NXT. This was looking, this storyline in NXT was shaping up probably to be one of the greatest or the best storylines of the summer. The NXT champion carrying cross chokes out Samoa Joe. Now we know how Joe is. Joe is going to be furious. This is what we want for TakeOver. That first loss goes to Samoa Joe. We send him up to the main roster. Vince did it on purpose. I believe Vince did that shit on purpose. You know why? Because NXT has been taken. And they knew, and they knew Triple H, Vince knew Triple H would not be able to do damage control. Vince is on record saying he doesn't watch NXT. So this booking of Karrion Cross, I should not be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if Vince McMahon has a problem with NXT since they could not beat AEW in the ring. While I don't agree, I'm willing to let it play out. But it's still a fuck up. Nobody wants to watch NXT now. You pretty much destroyed the mystique of NXT. NXT now looks like developmental. When you have Triple H saying it's the third brand. I don't know what you saw, Triple H, but your champion lost to Jeff Hardy, who's been jogging for the better part of 2021. It's a fuck up. That's what it is. Vince fucked up. Last story for today, guys. AEW interested in signing recently released WWE star. This is coming from WrestlingNews.co. Buddy Murphy, who was released by WWE due to budget cuts, has a few options where he could end up next. Murphy's uh, Murphy's 90-day non-compete clause expires on Tuesday, August 31st. Murphy is slated to work his first match outside of, w- outside of the WWE banner at Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling's anniversary show on September 11th at the Signature Training Academy. The former WWE star will also wrestle AEW star Brian Cage on Saturday, September 18th at the, 20, uh, at the 2300 Arena in Philadelphia for the Battleground Championship Wrestling promotion. If I'm Tony Khan, if I'm Tony Khan, I'm signing Buddy Murphy and I'm debuting him at that show in New York. The reports are that Daniel Bryan will be making his debut. I'm debuting Buddy Murphy at that show as well. And maybe we, or maybe if it was me, maybe we tease a Buddy Murphy versus Bryan Daniels. Maybe we tease that match. But if I'm Tony Khan, I'm absolutely making an offer for Buddy Murphy. We've seen what Buddy uh, we've seen what Buddy Murphy can do, even with no storyline. You know he's a tremendous wrestler. They called him WWE's best kept secret. Yet when we figured out how good the secret was when he had that match against Roman, then at TLC when him and Aleister Black put on that fantastic match in which Samoa Joe on commentary said, 
this will probably be match of the night and it turned out that it was way better than what everybody expected I'm absolutely signing Buddy Murphy absolutely well that is it you guys that is it for the Friday afternoon news please don't forget to like comment and subscribe it'll really help the channel grow once again, I go by the name of KV DeMarc, co-host of the DMV Podcast, and we will see you soon.